The simple act of reading a bedtime story to your child has been realised by an innovative programme for dads behind bars. A programme where the dads get to choose a book, a children's book, and they learn to read it out loud and that's with a little emphasis on words and with voices and all that stuff. And just being comfortable with reading out loud because it can be quite scary to hear your own voice really. And once we've got them feeling really comfortable with that, then we're going to tape it and burn it onto a CD and they can put a personal message on it. Then they will design the cover for the CD and we will post the book and the CD to their children. Because while they're inmates, a lot of them are dads too, you see. So it keeps that contact up with their children. Literacy is an underlining problem of society that flows through to the prisons. For someone to get a job, they have to be able to look in a paper and then if they can get past that, then they have to find where the job is and quite possibly they're given a job interview form or, a, or an application form. And if you haven't got literacy, you haven't got a chance, you know, you're just in your general everyday um, interaction with the world. Literacy and numeracy is huge. So a lot of people that's behind them and I know that a lot of the, the inmates are struggling with that and that's, that's massive. And so giving them these skills to learn to read, even at a pretty basic level, is more than they've, they've had to work with. And now at last we're actually recognising the learning difficulty thing and we recognise that at least 80% of prisoners have learning difficulties. So I would love to see a much bigger effort in that area going into um, people in prison because that's the way that they could actually make a huge difference in those people's lives. And then they could go out and actually be useful members of our society instead of being, you know, feeling like they're useless, feeling like they're the scum of the earth and, and not having any of the skills or any of the tools to actually do anything with themselves. The boundless energy of this wonderful woman is a shining example of the hundreds of volunteers that work tirelessly within New Zealand prisons. You've met Carola and... Um, Pauline, like the passion that they bring to the role is just something else. They're so compassionate towards the prisoners and you know they're always willing to go the extra mile and it's at Canterbury we've got 430 volunteers and we're, we're always passionate as each other. I don't think I'm lady bountiful or anything, you know, I'm not out there doing good deeds. I just think maybe I've got some skills that someone can use. Is it a rewarding experience volunteering? I definitely think so. I don't think I would do the job if I didn't think that was the case. Um, I mean, it's always good, like, there's been one or two prisoners that, you know, I have had the chance to work quite closely with, with and knowing they wanted to succeed. And, you know, there's been, like, years pass by now where I haven't seen their names pop up on muster list, so that's quite a good feeling. Pauline was given a taonga, a reward of appreciation and respect from men that she had been fortunate enough to work with. They organised and made a, um, this bone carving for me. And I was just so overwhelmed, you know. I, I, just, I just couldn't believe that they'd, they'd organised it and had made something and, and that just, you know, that just meant the world to me. I was I sort of got a bit tearful. I think they thought that, <laughs> that they'd upset me, but I, I just tried to explain that, you know, it was really just the loveliest thing that someone could do and they did a bit of research evidently and the reason that the um, carving has a different number of fingers and toes to other carvings is because it's sort of the, the super god as opposed to just an ordinary one you see. So that was really really nice, That was I felt quite um, humbled by that. Mm. The qualities that I look for in a volunteer is you've got to be impartial. Um, you're not going to be a good volunteer, to be honest, if you can't be impartial in this environment. Um, you need to be resilient as well. Um, it can be extremely challenging being a prison volunteer, but at the other end of the scale, it's also extremely rewarding. It's, it's the whole reason that you, um, well, that I volunteer is because the reward is, is not actually physical or something in your hand. If I can have an impact on one inmate and I've dealt with a hundred then I've, my job's done isn't it really.